So, hi everyone. Um, my name is Gareth Bendel. I'm part of the Post 16 Youth Mentor team for Cardiff, uh, Cardiff Youth Service. I work with um, 16 to 25 year olds um, looking to engage in education, training, or employment. Um, but while this COVID um, epidemic, I suppose, is, is been taking place, I've been doing some um, uh, independent living skills things with um, and cooking project with um, grassroots. Uh, we've been doing that in Eastmores and putting some cooking videos on and we found that um, working with um, young people with who have you know have no money so we do a lot of um, food parcels so we're trying to create menus so we've done a, a few online uh, recipes that um, that help with that um, so who I've got today who you can see next to me is um, Kevin Jones who um, will tell you a bit about himself so Right, I'll introduce you uh, and yeah, so hi Kevin, how are you doing? Hi Gareth, nice to be here. Yeah, yeah all good. Yeah, slightly yeah. nervous. Nice, but, um, right, so Kevin's going to tell you a little bit about himself and, and how that relates to what I do as well. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, no take it away, Kevin. Okay, yeah, cheers Gareth. So um, I think first of all, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kevin Jones. Uh, I'm a family's first dietitian and I work for Cardiff and Vale Health Board. And previously to the lockdown happening due to the, the pandemic of COVID-19, I, I would link in with um, organisations like Grassroots, uh, East Moors, trying to link in with young people to get a focus on how they can eat healthily, but um, mindful of the fact that skills need to be improved and budget needs to be looked at and kept in mind. So before that, that would be a case of coming along to see Gareth at Grassroots and saying like, you've got a group of young people, how do we set up like a cooking group? What kind of things would the young people want to be cooking? What do they want to be focusing on? And then we would do it in, a, in a, a joint cooking session. Whereas now things are moving away to more remote kind of working as we are trying to do now. So it's a case of how do we um, <laughs> still try to improve the health of young people um, digitally at the moment. So this is why we, we're here now having this um, little chat really. Yeah, these are new experiences for me as well as, and you know, you know, I, I, I tend to thrive on face to face contact and this is this is a new one for me. Um, and, and it's working within East Moors. when I was doing the cooking videos as well, for example, it was it got really difficult because you were just like you in the kitchen and someone recording you and you're thinking, how do I, how do I, you know, get across how I want to, you know, but yeah, it's really difficult to kind of get that, that across on a, on a video or on a video call or, you know, so yeah. So, so how have you been? Have you been okay? How have you yeah, been not okay? too bad. Yeah, I was, um, I was redeployed into the uh, Principality Stadium, so Dragon's Heart um, Hospital. Oh, wow, right in the thick um, of it. So, so straight into the thick of it, um, yeah, uh, dealing with patients uh, with coronavirus and COVID. I really enjoyed my time there. Uh, so it's a case now of coming, you know, back to, to this role and actually how can we improve the health of the, the general population and the young population during these challenging times. Uh, yeah. You mentioned just now about the typically, you know, we're very sociable face to face, you know, like being around people. And I think this age group, you know, particularly the, the teenage, the older teenage age group, yeah. you know, they, they knock around together. They like to, you know, be hanging around together and you know, yeah. being told not to do that you know it's very challenging um from routine has gone out the window it's it's how do we kind of support that i think now over the next few months as to when things yeah. start to change a little bit really and try and reflect that i think i think i think you're right i think it's important that we kind of reach out i think as, as a as a youth service and as, as as yourselves need to reach out and we need to be engaging and, and working with those young people and I think that's why I did the, the video thing is that I thought there's a lot, there's a lot of young people that I work with who are on their own, you know, yeah. living on their own in, in supported lodgings or unsupported lodgings. And, and it's not on their own, they're supporting their families as well and they, yeah, exactly. their roles changed a little bit. Yeah, and that, and that was a difficulty really is, is trying to gauge what, what they want and what is need, you know, with that. But it was interesting to say that, you know, whatever we supply, I mean, I know grassroots at the moment are, are, are kind of, of producing quite a lot of food parcels, you know, yeah. because people are finding it really difficult and still finding it difficult. You know, money's not there, 
you know so i think the importance is if we can help by any any way shape or form by by producing videos or, or getting people like yourself to help and, and say about diet and health and the budgets and stuff like that so yeah so it's it's, it's a strange old time in it but you know as long as we can get through it and you know be positive as well i think that's a good thing yeah that's it isn't it it's trying to keep your mood you know food can affect your mood so we, you know we can talk about that a little bit later on but it's uh, yeah. it is challenging you know you're producing these food parcels it's it's um costly to eat and people may not be getting that income into into the into the families as well um and it's accessibility you know where do we get where do we get the food from so you know, it's really good that grassroots are involved with you know distributing the food parcels but yeah. then it's thinking about well what do I do with these food parcels when I get them? Exactly, yeah. So, so it, it, it's looking at the what what's within them, looking at the staples, uh, and trying to make it as healthy as possible to try and maintain our mood, maintain our health um, as best as possible. So um, it is challenging, um, I suppose. In terms of eating on a budget, the the focus is to be planned, be be prepared, have yeah. a look, you know, look what's in your cupboards already. Um, see what you can use. Plan around that then. Um, so you kind of look at look at a list or make a list of what you've already got. And it may it may seem like it's not a lot, but we don't need a lot to start from scratch. Yeah. yeah. Um, look at the food parcel. You know, what is the staple in there? What's the the whole grain? What's the carbohydrate? You know, the cereal, that type of thing. Pasta, That's... spaghetti. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, no, I was. I... <laughs> There was a food pass. I mean, Morrison's and, and Sainsbury's have been supplying us with, with uh, kind of generously okay. donated food and stuff, mm. which is great. And um, I think we had a, a couple of weeks back, we had like sardines. We had some smash. You know, like smash. Yeah. So I, we ended up making um, like sardine fish cakes, right? And the, you know how strong sardines are. They're quite strong. <laughs> but they were. But in, in all that, in all that, you know, in honesty, they were really tasty. They were really nice. And it's it's. And you think, oh, no, that's not going to work. It's smashing sardines. But it did work, and you breadcrumbed them, put some onions in there and some flavouring. And it came out really nice. And I remember giving them to some young people and, and thinking, and I remember them saying, oh, these are quite nice. And I said, can you guess what was in it? He went, was it sardines, then? And you're like, yeah, and yeah. he has a smile on his face. And you think, at least someone's making the effort to kind of you know, do that kind of, yeah. you know, that. That you know, like Sainsbury's and yourselves and all that kind of, are making the effort to kind of help these young people go, get through this as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, there's other local organisations as well in terms of yeah. you know uh, part of the, the the third sector. You know, everyone's working very hard to try yeah. and you know reach out to kind of corporations. What foods available? How do we redistribute it across the city? What are the the the, the needy groups, not just the, the the youth groups? And then to support that, then you know, you mentioned about the sardines. But the, um, there are some resources that are yeah. put together already for yeah. recipes around what's in the food yeah. parcels. Yeah. And we've shared some with you. But I know if you go on the Food Cardiff um, yeah. web web page, there's plenty of um, information, uh, very good information, very healthy information, cheap, in, um, you know, cheap recipes to put together based on what's in the food parcel. So um, yeah. I definitely recommend going on, on, yeah, on, definitely. on yeah. that web page as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, on, on the, the, the subject of you know eating on how 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 can people eat healthily on a budget in your experience well, how 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 is that possible you know with, with lack of I think it's um, it's trying to keep it simple. You need a few basic ingredients that will flavour up pretty much any meal. So if you if you think of um, if you your basic stock cupboard items are around you know mixed herbs. Um, some chili powder, some chili yeah. flakes. Yeah. You have those three kind of flavor enhancers, spices, you know, uh, herbs, ingredients. You can pretty much flavor up yeah. any meal that you like. You know, um, you've got tins of tomatoes with, uh, with, within within the cupboard. You know, you've got the base there for a sauce that will, will make many meals. Yeah. Um, if you consider eating healthy on a budget and we're thinking, well, actually, I need, need to feed the family as well. Think of ideas around like one pot cooking. You know, you get a, a packet of pasta, you, know, you put it into the pot, you put your tins of tomatoes in there, you boil up some water, maybe um, a reduced salt stock, something like that. Put that in, chop up some vegetables. You cover it with foil and you put it in the oven for an hour and you know you've got a, a very decent like roast roast vegetable meal then it's 
I think, it's, I think along those lines. Yeah, it's good to experiment. I think don't be afraid not to experiment. You know, it's, I think that's the problem is that people don't, I think they just like tend to be like, oh, you know, what have I got? I ain't got much to do, but just be experimental with the food that you're doing and, and try new things. I think so. And, you know, we know that meat um, can be, be can be expensive. So in terms of from a health perspective, trying to get um, a good source of protein in, you know, in, into your diet, because young people are growing very quickly and we need yeah. to be, you know, support them with protein, they need you know, calcium in their diet, you know, that, that kind of thing to, to support their bone health. Uh, yeah. I think pulses, tin pulses are very cheap. You're talking 30, 40, 50 pence, you know, for a tin of pulses. So you can replace out that expensive meat item with, 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 with a pulse. Um, yeah. You know, you can stir that in. They're, they're pretty much pre-cooked within, within, the, within the tin already. So you just have to reheat them. Um, and then, you know, that will stretch the meal out further. It's, uh, yeah. it's thinking along those lines. And don't be put off by the fact that you haven't got every single ingredient. If you follow in a recipe, That's it's it. like, yeah. just just give it a go. And, you know, everyone's got slightly different tastes. So don't don't, don't be put off. It's easy for me to say that, but don't be put off um, but by that. I do all the time. I, I, you know, I replace something. Even at home, I replace it in the cupboard. If I ain't got it, I don't, I don't go out and buy it. I just say, right, okay, what can I use instead? You know, yes, and, that's, yeah. and, and and it works. It works, and it, it, it saves on waste as well, and that, that which is an important part of it because, you know, I end up when I was chefing and stuff. When I was a chef for that's all those years, it, you know, that, that was the biggest bugbear is that you always had that waste. Um, and then, but it's think about using those leftovers then, and it is the next meal as well, isn't it? So um, if you got, if you so you got a loaf of bread and the you know the end pieces, and they come into but then end of yeah. you know end of the shelf life. You know, you toast them up and you chop. You know, you chop them up and then you can sprinkle them as breadcrumbs. That can be added then onto the onto the pasta bake that that, that you made. Yeah, well, well, that's what I do with the fish case as well, and 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 things like that. You just add some old bread, just put it. I had a I had a one of these I had a fruit shoot. Do you know fruit juices things? Mm -hmm. and I just breadcrumbed them in those because I ain't got a proper mixer. But yeah, <laughs> so then I just use that, and then you know it's it, it becomes that kind of simple really and just using the things that you've got around yeah you know? yeah and it, you know it's we're talking about skills as well isn't it you know in this time and we can't you know physically show young people how to you know can't sit with them and 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 use use a knife and a, and a, and a cutting board but i know at the moment there's a there's a project called cardiff cooking together right, and there's yeah. lots of videos going on there um led by the community and yeah. um, so there's like skills-based sessions on there there's good recipe sharing ideas. So yeah. if young people are interested in thinking, well, actually, I would like to do that to cook something where I'm a bit nervous, I don't quite know how to hold a knife, or um, I'm not sure what recipe, what ingredient goes with what, then there's another good um, recipe link for you and a resource to, to look at with with step-by-step -step videos as well going on to it. I think this is this is really helpful for like um, young parents as well. Young parents have got, you know, their children and looking to try and feed them with something different and, and, and not give them the, the kind of staples that you usually find and 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 try and do something which excites them as well. And, th and this takes me to the next question, really, is about um, like, what, sh what was your favourite mo meal as a child? What, what was, what was your... Child, yeah. Yeah. Know, um, you not know, so... that adventurous, but... Um... I um same you know same as well as any other teenagers you know you're living at home yeah you know in my in my case I was relying on my parents in terms of the food provided they were very busy you know off working um I used to have spaghetti bolognese kind of ready meal that that's where I know I started off um, <laughs> and then when I moved out and started living on my own I just thought I can't keep affording to buy these ready meals but I really like spaghetti bolognese so. I started to just be a bit more inquisitive. You know, you look at the packet and you think, well, what's actually in this? You know, I like it. But can I kind of recreate this more cheaply because I still want to eat this, you know, this 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 meal? So it progressed from basically, well, I understand there's pasta in it, there's a sauce in it, and it's meat and some vegetables in it. Yeah, yeah. Just a case of, well, I can't go straight from not being able to cook to making, yeah. you know, a cordon bleu type 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 meal. So it's like, well, actually, I'll start off with, I'll, I'll learn how to, to boil some pasta. That's a good start. Yeah. You know, I bought a ready-made sauce in a jar. I thought, well, I'll add that to it. And yeah. actually, there's some meat involved in it. I'll cook up some of the meat and I'll mix it all together and thought, well, actually, 
I quite I prefer this now. This is okay. I'm getting more independent. I'm feeling more confident about it. Yeah. And then, so once I, I kind of not nailed that, but familiar with that, it's a case of well, actually, do I need to be spending out on money on a jar? So then it's a case of looking at the jar and going, well, what's actually in this? And you realize then it's a tin of tomatoes. You know, there's those herbs and spices I mentioned earlier. And there's, there's some, some vegetables. So the two pound in the shops for that, don't they? That's the thing. This oh. is it, isn't it? You know, and you quickly move from spending two to three pounds per single meal yeah. to actually being able to feed a family for two to three pounds. You know, um, a, a, a whole meal then, where you know you learn to boil, you know, learn the basics. You know, you boil the pasta, you chop up the vegetables, you roast them a little bit, you add in the tomato sauce, you mix it all together. Mm. And there's kind of the meal that you created, you know. I, I remember being the, the fussiest chef. Like I was really, I was just really not in terms of, but what I ate, like I didn't, I didn't like a lot of things. Yeah. Time. But then the more the more I tasted things, the more I kind of got used to it, and, and then the more I made things, I was thinking, oh, this is all right actually. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't. And it's it's. I think it's getting that experience of of actually having the confidence to go out. I mean, I, I remember. A couple of years back, Jack Monroe, I'm sure you've heard of that. Mm -hmm. You had that book, um, Eating Well for Less or something like that. Yeah. that I'm sure. And she was saying that she, she could feed her and a child for like £10 a week or something each, yeah. which is amazing. And, and all right, the, the nutritional value, and she's probably buying the cheapest in the shop and stuff like that. But that's that's okay, that's acceptable because I think you, you're you you're eating. And that's, that's well, important. Well, I think um, from a nutritional value perspective, um, Buying the cheapest ingredients isn't necessarily the unhealthiest option. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's targeting which types of ingredients that you look at. So I've already given an example of you know if you swap in meat for pulses, yeah. you know, range of different pulses, you'll save yourself a fortune, but you'll still be getting a good a good protein source. Um, yeah. With regards to if you're buying your whole pasta couscous, if you're going for like the whole grain varieties, then you you're introducing fiber fiber into the diet. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at you want to be eating fish, so you give the example earlier of sardines. So sardines are a nice oily fish. You get your omega threes from them. They are a lot cheaper than a cut of salmon. So it's, yeah. just, it's just looking at okay, what do I want to be making? And there are certain adapt adaptations yeah. to be made. But you, from a health perspective, you know if you're going down the the low fat, low low salt option. As opposed to buying the, the jar that's kind of already made, have a look what's in it and just think, can I make it with some tomatoes, the herbs I've said already, and put some pepper into it, and yeah. you've got a ready-made sauce then. Yeah, I mean, it surprises me when I first start looking to it in the contents of these jars and things and these ready meals and how much salt and sugar and, it's you know, it's yeah. incredible. It's incredible, you know, and that's not good for you. It's not, it's not good for you. Yeah, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to, re, you know, re, if you reduce our salt intake, reduce our sugar intake, you know, keep our fat levels reasonable. Um, yeah. Our palate will also as well become accustomed to the, the types of foods that we learn to make as well. So we'll get used to that, you know, the less processed food, the less salt, and actually we'll start to, to enjoy the flavours more of the stuff that we create then. Yeah. So, yeah, we've, we've pretty much covered, I mean, one of the questions I have here is, is how... How can I keep healthfully? How can I keep healthy through this um, COVID nineteen kind of period? It, yeah, through I mean, the pandemic. Yeah, that's the that's the difficulty. Is is that I know I've been living in the fridge. I know I've been living in the fridge, and there's yeah. that kind of comfort eating of, you know, I've got chocolates and I've had crisps and I'm just snacking all day long because you're working from home and you're thinking, I'm just bored out of my mind. Yeah, you know? and but then you think, right, what can I eat? What can I eat? You know, it is. It is. It's, it's very difficult at the moment, isn't it? You know, everyone's routines are changed. Yeah. Um, with you know the fact that uh, you know we're, we're under you know a pandemic of COVID nineteen, so having a routine, a daily routine, is really important in terms of um, you know having a set time where you would think, right, I'm going to go outside and get some fresh air. I'm going to take some exercise activity. Um, having a set time where actually, like we're, we're tuning in now, you know, via this, where I'll actually call someone, speak to someone, you yeah. know, being lonely at, at home from a mental health perspective, you know, it, it isn't very good. And then if we think around how food and mood can, can, can be affect, how food can affect mood, um, if we think about like, if we're eating the, the types of 
comfort foods then that we kind of would usually have as a treat. Now they become a bit more um, routine, probably coming creeping into the, the daily life versus where it would be more on a um, on an occasion. Then our sugar levels, they, 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 they'll spike our sugar levels um, yeah. in, in, our, in our system. So, you know, reaching for the, having the whole grain carbohydrates at each meal time will, will stabilize your blood sugars, making sure there's some good protein source, some vegetables with, with that meal will yeah. help to stabilize kind of um, what's going on in, inside your body as well. Keep yeah. your gut healthy with the, with, with the fiber that, that, that you're eating. Um, so then you're more likely then to not crave those snacks, which are, which are tempting. And if you can get into a nice healthy routine around, you know, make it, you know, we are allowed outside. So, you know, go outside, keep socially distanced. Um, make sure you, you know, you ring someone, chat to someone, call, call someone. It's really important that you check in. Um, yeah. You know, well, yeah, it's really important, I think, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, ab absolutely. You know, no one wants to be left, you know, left in isolation on their own. It's, um, you know, and if you are struggling, there are organisations that, you, you know, you can reach out to. Um, yeah. I think it's important. And, you know, if you are struggling, reach out to grassroots for, 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 for one who can kind of um, link you in with other organisations as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Give us a call. Yeah. The, how how do you see